So you finally worked up the nerve to check out your local bathhouse. Or maybe you're on a business trip and feel safer being the anonymous out-of-towner at the sauna. Whatever the deal, here you are, past the front door, through the check-in, and undressing in the locker room. But the reality of your situation is starting to set in. You've made it this far, but now what? How do you cruise at a bathhouse? How do you get someone's attention? And, more to the point, how do you seal the deal? In this video, I will walk you through the typical spaces that you'll find at a bathhouse and reveal the very best ways to find and approach your object of desire. The night is young, but we are not. So let's get started. And helping me demonstrate today are my buddies Anthony and Wyndham. And after a day of filming for YouTube, we kept the cameras rolling and shot a super hot two-part scene for OnlyFans. To see that scene, just go to my OnlyFans page linked through my website found in the description below. We're going to start this discussion with a quick talk on consent. Consent has evolved over the years when it comes to bathhouses. Let me explain how. Gone are the days of no means no. For those of you who don't know what no means no means, when somebody comes on to you in whatever form or fashion, whether it's through physical touch or verbally, you say no, the answer is no, no means no. That's all well and good, but things have evolved since no means no. We are now using yes means yes. It is not correct to go around touching people inappropriately without getting a yes or an affirmation from them first. Nobody should be touching you without your consent, even in a bathhouse. The small caveat to that, I would say, would be the dark room, where it's expected that it's pitch black, you can't really get affirmations as easily, and you're using touch more readily. Outside of that, wherever you are in the bathhouse, just keep in mind that a yes means yes. Get that consent first, make sure they're on board before you start molesting them. Okay, so now that we understand that simple concept, let's move on to the first potential cruising location, the locker room. The locker room is the first point of contact for many people at the bathhouse. If you didn't get a room and you got a locker instead, this is gonna be like your home base. The pros of the locker room in terms of cruising and meeting people is that it's usually well lit. You need to see the number on the locker, you need to see the contents inside, <laughs> you need to find the key. It's usually well lit enough that you can see other people. Another pro is that folks are kind of static in this area because they are also at their lockers. So you could be at your locker, somebody could be at the locker beside you, and you have that time to make a connection. Now, the cons of the locker room and cruising at the bathhouse are that it's extremely public. Then this might not be the place for you. Another con of the locker room would be that usually the people that are in the locker room are getting undressed. They just got there. They want to get their bearings. They want to see what's out there. It's not perhaps an ideal place to cruise somebody because they just want to make sure and see what's out there. Now, how do you cruise in the locker room? Treat it a lot like the gym. So it's gonna be a lot about the eyes. Some people are more gregarious and outgoing. Some people are shy and introverted. Do not take it personally if you're not getting the response <laughs> that you wanna get from people. The next location we're gonna cover is the hallways. Now, the pros about cruising in the hallways is that there is a lot of foot traffic. Everybody is coming and going. They you know, some people really look like they're, they're on a mission. Like they are just charging down the halls. Other people are meandering and swerving and weaving. But it's a good place for people watching and really getting a sense of who is there that night at that time. Another pro is that it's usually medium lit because you need to find your room, you need to see the key going in the, th so usually there's enough light that you can also make out faces, which, I personally enjoy a nice face. So the cons of trying to cruise in the hallway is that you've got moving targets. I mean, these people are walking down the hall. How do you stop somebody in their tracks? It's kind of difficult to get a moving target to stop. So how do you cruise in the hallways, you're asking me, Patrick? Well, the best way I've found is to just stop. Stop, <laughs> stay in one place, 
watch the people go by. Now, when you see something you like, make sure to make like intense eye contact with them and then hopefully they'll stop. They stop, you start chatting and then you take it to another location. If you are the one that's like walking around the halls and you see someone else that's stopped that you're into, then bingo, stop and make it obvious that you're into them. And hey, if you're liking this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing. And if you're a fan, why not consider becoming a member of the channel by finding the join button on the right hand side of the main channel page. Thank you for your support. The next area of the bathhouse that we are going to consider for cruising is the gym. Not every bathhouse has a gym, but if yours does, then you could be in luck and you could find somebody that you can f Some of the pros of having a gym to cruise in is the lighting. Again, it would be very dangerous <laughs> to try to work out in the pitch black, so usually they are well lit areas so you can see exactly what the other person looks like, which is nice. Also, the, per the people that are using the gym are relatively static in the sense that they're not charging down a hallway on a mission, they're beside you doing bicep curls. So they're kind of in close proximity and sticking around you. So you have time to make eyes, make small talk. Now the cons, of course, they could just be working out. I mean, I know people that join a gym membership at the sauna to go work out. Yeah, of course they have sex and they cruise and stuff, but Sometimes they just go for the gym and then those people usually while they're working out they're focused on the workout and they're not really cruising. So you might have to kind of decipher is this person working out or is this person kind of like here for more. The other con is obviously it's very public. I actually don't remember ever seeing anybody actually having sex in the gyms at the saunas. So again, it's a good place to meet somebody potentially, but you take it somewhere else. And how do you cruise at a gym? I kind of covered this already. It's, you're gonna treat it like just a regular gym. Like how would you cruise somebody at a regular gym? I've already done a video on that. There is a lot of eye contact involved. I mean, if somebody's making eye contact with you, it opens the door for conversation. And let me know in the comments below, where is your favorite place in the bathhouse to cruise. Where do you find the most success? Let me know. All right, let's talk about the wet areas because this is very interesting. There are different parts of the wet area and they're kind of all a little bit different. So let's cover the pros. First of all, people in the wet areas are relatively static. Like if we're talking about the jacuzzi, they're sit sitting in the jacuzzi. The cons, of course, depending on the amenity, they're gonna be different. A lot of times people are showering, either they just got there, in which case, much like the locker room, they are still getting a lay of the land, so they might not be ready to settle down and buy a house with you just yet. Or also in the showers, they might be showering after they've just had a fantastic orgy in the, on the slurp ramp and in the dark room. So they could have just finished something, in which case they're probably not open for something right away. In the jacuzzi, the cons are, a lot of people are just relaxing in the jacuzzi. Also, usually you're not supposed to do anything in the jacuzzi. Um, you can certainly get things started, but then sort of, you know, move on. Cons of the steam room are that it can get really hot in there. You know, you start, kissing and doing stuff, your temperature's rising, your heart's beating fast, so it can get a little overwhelming and uncomfortable in the steam room. And then you've got the dry sauna, which is probably the best place of all of those places to at least start something. It's usually well lit, it's drier, it's warmish, but not too warm that you can't start doing stuff. And there's other people, you can put on a little show. If it gets too much, you can leave. So it really depends on which part of the wet rooms that you're in, it's gonna depend on the pros and cons. But how to cruise is basically the same in all of them. You're just gonna start with eye contact and start chatting them up a little bit. And to seal the deal, you can certainly start doing stuff. I myself have been in the showers. I mean, I'm not saying you can't do it, but it's a good place to start and then 
take it somewhere else. The last place we're gonna cover is the dark rooms. And I left this one for last because this is really the Wild West. There aren't many rules with the dark rooms. I did a full video on a dark, dark room tour and I talked about dark rooms and how uh, there's these little flashlights so you can see what you're doing. I got so many comments from people saying, never flash a light in the dark room. So listen, we're all learning together. I mean, I know a lot because I've done this a lot, but I'm not perfect, I don't know everything. So thank you for the feedback. Absolutely, do not flash anything in people's, well, certainly in their face, but in the dark room, nobody wants to see lights of any kind. It's dark for a reason. Like I said, it's more like the Wild West. There are a lot less rules. Is that a pro? Is that a con? That kind of depends on you and what you're looking for. <laughs> We talked about consent earlier. The consent in a dark room is going to be a little bit different. You are using your hands more to feel around, to feel your neighbor, to see if they're into it. I mean, I don't know a lot of people that reject other people in a dark room, um, but people use dark rooms differently. Myself, if I see somebody like my target, <laughs> and I see him and he goes into a dark room, I'll follow him in and make sure I'm with him because I personally like prefer to see who the person is. But consent wise, I mean, it's all about touch. It's all about, you'll know if somebody's into it. It's the dark room, most people are, I mean. <laughs> so as you can see, in most cases, there's a bit of a getting to know you period followed by a where should we take this period. And in my experience, you know pretty much off the bat if someone is into it or not. You do not have to waste your time trying to figure it out. It's pretty clear. Also, don't waste your time on someone who isn't ready to play or isn't giving you the time of day. But on the flip side of that, don't waste a perfectly good opportunity with someone who is showing you interest because you're waiting for something better to come along. And to be honest, you won't know until you start playing if there's a connection between the two of you anyway. So try it you might like it. My channel is made possible through the support of my patrons, like my newest patrons, Anthony and Colin. Patrons of my channel get advanced access to videos, behind the scenes content, and monthly video chats with moi. And for a deeper dive, why not sign up for my newsletter? It's absolutely free and full of discounts on fun stuff for you to enjoy. For all the ways in which you can support, just go to patrickmorano.com, linked in the description below. And I will see you in the next video. Mwah.